new discovery. More nonsense from Edward Lear. That's the topic for today. And Mark and Pete live. I'm Pete, the clergyman, and with me is Mark, the businessman. So, what have you got for this week, Mark? Uh, what Edward Lear's in the news? Oh yes, Edward Lear is definitely back. Yes, more nonsense. Well, the fact is, is that some archivists have actually found previously unseen poems and letters written by the Victorian nonsense poet. Edward Lear. Okay, I'll, bring up the, um, I'll bring up the article now. Yeah, carry yes. on. Yes. A great hero of mine. As many yep. of you will know if you've followed the Mark and Pete series, poems are, are really, really the backbone of such um, yeah, humour and observation. Now, there could be no one better than Edward Lear himself. Now, he was somebody who was able to create such nonsense and create little witticisms, limericks, uh, and observations on life. And and why not? Uh, we've got into a world where everything is very, very serious. Now, of course, many people will probably know him for the owl and the pussycat. I'll just quickly read the first part, which is the owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. Many people will be very familiar with that. Yeah, but I think uh, many people will be thinking a five pound note, they're worth nothing. But um, that's as, as, uh, as the. Uh, the uh, as the monetary the monetary value of the five pound note disappears like a wisp of smoke that could be happening. So, yeah, we've got yes. this article up um, just in support of what you were saying. Previously unseen poems and letters written by Victorian nonsense poet Edward Lear have been found hidden in a private collection. The discovery was made by University of Nottingham Nottingham PhD student Amy Wilkinson yes. in the British Library. While sifting through the manuscripts, Miss Wilkinson noticed some pages written by Lear to a young Englishwoman he had befriended in Italy. Yes. The uni university said the finds were significant. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and we've actually got a picture. This is a picture of his actual poem as he well, wrote it. I like this because not only is it actually in his own handwriting, he's it accompanies it with a little drawing, yes. and and I think it's very quirky. Um, it should be noted that um, uh, for anyone who has studied Edward Lear, you'll know that although he obviously was able to write um, and published many poems and um, literary pieces, um, he was also a great cartoonist and uh, an illustrator and um, and somebody who was also adept at music. So his whole career creative mind was filled with the way that he saw the world. Yes, I can see that. But it's interesting, isn't it, that he's known for nonsense. And I think totally. this, it, it, it's, it's something that we need more of these days. Utter drivel. Uh, it, it, well, it seems strange to say that, but yes, uh, utter and complete piffle I, is I, I, <laughs> that we think... could do with more of these days. Because well, you're tempted to think that uh, politicians, scientists and the like are talking utter piffle when they're trying to be serious. So. I think a way of escape from that, a way for us to be able to cope with it, if you like, yeah. is with humour, humorous piffle. Yes. Well, I think we should highlight the uh, discovered poem because this is just oh, yes, one that, of many. Okay, I'll bring it up. Yeah. Yes. Well, the thing here is it was a limerick. Uh, so this was something which uh, he obviously must have where it came from. We don't know. and We can't uh, understand the context. But here is the lost limerick. There was an old man on a bicycle whose nose was adorned with an icicle. But they said, if you stop, it will certainly drop and abolish you both and your bicycle. Yes, it's, there you go. Now, now, that's interesting. This type of poem you see, is um, it's referred to there in that article as a limerick. Now, yeah. I find that strange because that is not the form of a limerick that I know of anyway. That's, that's a nonsense poem uh, with... Uh, you know, which repeats the same word at the end as it does at the start. But the lyrics, the limericks we've come to know and love over the years don't do that. They rhyme at the end, but then they're not the same word at the end. Uh, yeah. Leah had his own different style. So that's more of a, it's a Leah nonsense poem. It's not particularly a, a limerick. Um, and, and doing that to me, just, I don't know who am I to critique Leah, but why not? I'll go for it. Uh, I think that makes him immediately less funny <laughs> i need another word at the end yes I need a different word a well-chosen amusing word even if it's another word for bicycle well uh, 
I, I mean, we could rewrite it live on air here. A tricycle. A, he could have had three. Could have yeah. had three stalactites. Or it will certainly drop and freeze you into an icicle. <laughs> so something, you know. Something. Oh, he's already got icicle. Oh. It, indeed. Yeah. You see how difficult this is. That's why I'm not <laughs> a, a famous poet like Edward Lear. Yes, revealed well, thing, live on air. I think. Well, one one thing that many people may not know is that we have to give um, credit to. The patron, Edward Stanley. Yes, as you will all know, is the 13th Earl of Derby. And he was a great patron of Edward Lear because Edward Lear, like a lot of um, poets and authors and musicians and artists, needed somebody who could give them endorsement. And what was interesting is, is that um, the Earl of Derby, the 13th Earl of Derby, was somebody who actually admired um, uh, Lear for a number of reasons. One, to do sketches of things such as botany scenes, something that would effectively categorize things that he was interested in. But what was interesting is that that gave him the springboard to do so much more. He also actually, as Edward Lear, um, worked for many other um, poets. Alfred Lord Tennyson was another one which he um, uh, produced work for and drawings. And he was a very well-traveled man. So the idea being is, is that he actually absorbed lots of different cultures. So what I think is quite interesting, although we think of him as an Englishman, somewhat of an eccentric and a Victorian, he brought um, travels and experience from places like Italy and many other um, European countries. So he's an amalgamation, in my opinion, of observations of a period of time. So I think that to, to this idea, um, maybe this is where I think that, uh, you know, the, the idea of somebody who can espouse their ideas and the quirky way of seeing yeah. the world. Yeah, it was a qu the quirky original way that he looked at it. Uh, although, you know, I, um, I, I said that something that takes away to me from the poems, uh, still the wit is there and you it's just a, an unusual view of the world. It's his personal view of the world and i suppose if if you talk about great art uh it if, if it can get across something different uh something uh a different way of viewing the world from everyone else then you've achieved it haven't you so i think we could say that uh this this nonsense is an example of great art well, indeed, and I have, of course, in fine fashion, a homage to old Edward Lear. And here is my take on, on Edward himself. The gist of a poetical twist. There once was a man named Lear who had a poetical ear. With a finger probe, he could twist his lobe, and nonsense was all he could hear. <laughs> yes, so there yes. You go. yes. Brilliant, Mark. Don't give up the day job. But yes, uh, we, we get new posts from Mark every week. So remember to tune back next yeah. week. And remember, gentle listener, uh, to put your own version of the poem, uh, of, of an Edward Lear style poem. Be brilliant to, to hear from you and see what you can come up with. So much nonsense is happening these days. Why not add to it? But remember to like and subscribe and share this video. We would like to share the nonsense around. But for now, well, it just remains to say, Catch you next week. Doodle nonsense. <laughs>